Are you interested in building a backend API for your front end, but don't want the hassle of hosting the app and the database? Then you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll show you how to build a Commons API using Cloudflare D1. If you're not familiar, D1 is Cloudflare's native serverless database. With D1, you can enjoy the simplicity and robustness of SQL Lite without having to worry about hosting or managing a database. Because D1 is hosted by Cloudflare, you'll experience excellent load tolerance and high availability at no extra cost. You can easily interact with D1 databases from the command line. And if a mishap occurs, you can easily restore the database to any point within the last 30 days. In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to create a D1 database and how to build a Cloudflare Workers API using the D1 database. To do this, I'll create a simple comments API that lets users create and list comments on posts. For simplicity's sake, the app will not store the posts, only comments. If you want to follow along, you'll need the latest version of Node.js installed in your system and a Cloudflare account. You'll also need the Wrangler CLI tool and the Hono library. I'll show you how to install both of these in this video. You can find the link to download Node.js and sign up for a free Cloudflare account in the video description below. To interact with Cloudflare, I'll use the Wrangler command line tool. Cloudflare recommends installing this tool locally in your project rather than globally, so that you and your team can use the same Wrangler version, control Wrangler versions for each project, and roll back to an earlier version of Wrangler if needed. Right now, I don't have a project created, but I can still use Wrangler directly with NPX and it will automatically choose the latest version of Wrangler. I'll use this method to initialize a project, which will then install Wrangler locally. Then, every time I run NPX Wrangler from inside the project, the locally installed version of Wrangler will be used. I'll start by running this command, which will create a project in the D1 example directory. If you want to follow along, head to the GitHub repo linked in the video description below, and you'll find all the code that I'll use in this video. Wrangler will ask me a few questions about the project. When prompted, I'll choose Hello World Worker as the type of project and select No when asked if I want to use TypeScript. NPM will now install the dependencies, and it might take a while. I'll respond Yes when asked about using Git. Finally, I'll be given the option to deploy the app immediately, but for this tutorial, I'll be deploying it later, so I'll respond no. In this app, I'll use Hono to create the API. Hono is a lightweight, super fast framework for the edge. Its creators claim that it's the fastest router for Cloudflare workers. I'll run npm install Hono to install Hono in my project. If you navigate to the source directory, you'll find the index.js file which is the entry point of the worker. I'm going to start fresh, so I'll delete the existing code. Then I'll import the Hono module and initialize a Hono app. Later, I'll connect to this API using a front-end app. I'll also need to set up course rules so that the front-end is allowed to call the API. I'll import the course module and add it to the app. I'll define two routes, but both of them will have the same path slash api slash posts slash slug slash comments. The first route is a get route for fetching all comments on a post. And the second route is a post route for creating a new comment on a post. For now, I'll keep the bodies of these routes empty. Next, I'll create a D1 database. The Wrangler CLI has a D1 subcommand that lets me interact with D1 databases directly from the command line. I'll run the Wrangler D1 create command to create a new database. At this point, Wrangler will open the browser and ask you to log in to Cloudflare if you haven't already done so. Since I have logged in with Wrangler before, I won't have to log in again. Wrangler stores its configuration in the Wrangler TomL file. I'll need to create a binding in this file to reference the newly created database. Bindings allow you to access Cloudflare resources like D1 databases, KV namespaces, and R2 buckets using a variable name in the code. Thankfully, creating the binding is easy because the Wrangler D1 create command prints the exact code I need to put in the TomL file. I'll simply copy and paste it at the end of the file. Now that the binding is defined, I need to issue SQL commands to the D1 database directly using Wrangler D1 execute. For instance, to list the tables in the database, I'll use Wrangler D1 execute, followed by the name of the database. I'll add the remote flag, 
since this needs to be run in the remote database. Then I'll put the command flag and then the SQL light command. I can also pass an SQL file using the file parameter. This is perfect for initial data seeding in a single command. To do so, I'll create a schemas directory and create a schema.sql file. In this file, I'll create a comments table. The comments table has four columns, ID, author name, comment body, and post slug. I'll run the Wrangler D1 execute command again. but I will pass the SQL file this time. The final step remaining is to finish the two routes in source slash index.js. I'll complete the get route first. From the request URL, I'll fetch the post slug. Then I'll issue an SQL query to the D1 database and pass the post slug. Here, I'm using the prepare function to prepare an SQL statement. This statement contains a question mark where the post slug is supposed to be. Calling bind on this statement and passing the post slug injects the value of the post slug into the SQL statement. This method is better than directly passing the post slug into an SQL string as it protects against SQL injection. Finally, the all function returns all rows matching the query. I'll then return this response as a JSON object. At this point, you might have noticed I'm accessing the database using env.db. This was set up in the wrangler.toml file. I gave my binding the name db, which allowed me to access the database simply using env.db. Now I'll finish the other post route. First, I'll extract the slug from the URL. Then, I'll extract the author name and the comment body from the request body. I'll add some validations to make sure the author and body parameters aren't empty. Then, I'll execute an SQL statement to insert the new comment. This is similar to what I did before, except instead of all, I'm using run, since this is not a select statement. This returns a success parameter, which I'll use to send a response back. Finally, I'll export the app. At this point, my app is ready and it's time to deploy it. I'll run Wrangler Who Am I to ensure I'm logged into Cloudflare. Because I've already logged in, it returns my details. If you're not logged in, you'll be prompted to do so. In Wrangler.toml, the name field specifies the project name. I'll keep it as is, but you can easily update it if you want to. Then I'll run npx wrangler deploy to deploy the project. This might take a while, so sit back and relax. Once the deployment finishes, Wrangler gives me a deployment URL. I'll use this as my base URL. To test the deployed app, I'm going to use curl. You could also use a graphic tool like Postman or Insomnia, but I'm going to use curl because it's lightweight and easy to use. First, I'll make a post request to create a new comment. I'll use my base URL, then slash API slash posts. I'll use hello world as the slug, and then I'll add slash comments. This is the route I defined in my worker. Using curl's JSON flag, I'll send a JSON body to the API. Next, I'll make a get request to the same URL which should return the comment I just created. I've tested the API with curl, but a backend API like this is best used with a GUI frontend. Now it's time to integrate this API into a frontend app. Since creating a frontend is a little too intense for this video, I'll use a pre-built frontend instead. The frontend I'll use here can be found in the Cloudflare Workers SDK repository. I've linked to this video in the description below. As you can see, the workers SDK repository is huge and you only need the example front end directory. Unfortunately, GitHub doesn't allow you to download a single directory from a repo and cloning the entire repo for a single directory is a bit overkill. Instead, I'll use this tool as a download directory GitHub IO, which lets me download a single directory. I'll copy the directory URL and paste it into this box. 
When I press enter, the directory will be downloaded as a zip file. I'll create a directory named example front end and unzip the directory there. Then I'll run npm install to install the dependencies. The front end API calls to the deployed versions of the back end API. When I open source slash views slash post view dot view, I'll find the two API calls here and here. I'll replace these two URLs with the URL of my deployment. Then I'll run the npm run dev to start the front end server. I'll access the front end at localhost 5173, and you can see that there is already a dummy post with the slug hello world. When I click on this post, I can see the comment I created from the CLI. In the comments box, I can create a new comment and it'll show up in the list of comments. If you've been following along, congrats! You just successfully created a comments API that uses Cloudflare's D1 database. If you want to explore everything Cloudflare D1 has to offer, check out the Cloudflare D1 documentation at developers.cloudflare.com forward slash D1. This documentation has everything you need to get started with D1. You'll also find guides on how to configure D1 and collect metrics and analytics from D1. There are also all kinds of examples using D1 with different frameworks such as Hono, Remix, Svelte, and Python workers. You can also use D1 directly using an API, which is also documented. We'd love for you to join us over on Discord. Just go to discord.cloudflare.com to join. It's a great place to ask questions or get a better idea about what other people are building with Cloudflare's developer tools. I hope you found this tutorial interesting and useful. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and make sure you subscribe to the Cloudflare channel. We have all kinds of videos that can help you learn how to best utilize all the Cloudflare developer tools that are available. Happy coding!